Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, a huge thank you and welcome to my new subscribers. My name is Priya and I'm a final year medical student in Newcastle University Medicine Malaysia. Hope you are doing well and ready for an informational content today. Today we are going to talk about S-bar approach. If you have been placed in emergency medicine before or have practiced simulation before, then I'm pretty sure you know what is S-bar is about. Um, if you are interested, you can click on the buff to watch my previous video on ABCDE assessment in emergency medicine which is related together with S-bar as well. Okay, so what is S-bar? S-bar is a prevailing gold standard handoff structure which was originally developed and used effectively by the US Navy during their submarine duty handoff. So in healthcare, doctors or medical students use this S-bar approach to communicate, especially to discuss a critical case which requires clinicians' immediate attention and action. S-bar provides a focused structure for an interaction that helps both the caller and the receiver. It provides clarity to communication and prevents unreliable process of hinting and hoping that other person understands. So by actually developing a good S-bar approach and applying it in your real life and your exams. You are developing a good communication skill. At the same time, you are fostering a culture of patient safety. Although SBAR might look like a simple tool, incorporating all that details in the rush of time comes with considerable effort and numerous practice. It has a good system which creates a good head over. Imagine your doctor will be really happy imagining their, his, her or they are patient in the emergency department while talking to you over the phone. That's how well you should grasp your S-bar communication tool. Now I will show you how to use the S-bar method in detail using a sample case. Here we have the S-bar communication tool in a summarized version. First, let's look into situation. Here you are going to identify and introduce yourself and your position. Once you have done that, you need to confirm that you are talking to the specific doctor. And then you explain the reason of your call in terms of who is the patient, what was the presenting complaint and uh, if there were any concerning events or not. So basically here, the person in call should be clear of what is happening and the reason you are calling them. Once you have established that, move into background. In background, you are telling the patient's history in a chronological order and updating their current condition. This includes their medical history, their surgical history, their date of admission, admitting diagnosis, any prior diagnostic or lab tests, significant allergies, current medications, last set of observations. After that, you are going into assessment. Here you apply your clinical thinking and inform the receiver about your assessment of the situation and what you think that this patient is having right now. Not only you have reviewed your findings from your assessment, but you have consolidated these with other objective indicators such as lab tests. For recommendation, explain what you need specifically and make suggestions so you can clarify expectation from your senior doctor as well. And if you receive any advice, make sure to repeat them to ensure accuracy. Now, I will be using the S-bar tool in a myocardial infarction case. Uh, hello, doctor. My name is Dr. Priya. I'm the Foundation Year 1 doctor on call from the a &E department. I'm calling regarding Mr. David Smith, date of birth 14 Feb. 1955, hospital number X0786543, and I would like your input regarding his management as I think he has had a myocardial infarction. He presented with central chest pain radiating to his jaw and left arm. His background, he has significant cardiovascular risk factors such as hypertension, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and dyslipidemia, for which he takes amlodipine, metformin, and simvastatin. He smokes 20 cigarettes per day for the past 40 years and drinks 30 units of alcohol per week. There is a strong family history of cardiovascular disease as well. On examination, he is anxious, in pain, he is also cold and clammy to touch. His chest is clear, S1 and S2 is heard with no additional murmur. Normal abdominal exam and neuro examination. His observations are 
Currently, oxygen sets around 94% on 15 liter non rebreather oxygen mask. Respirate rate is around 24, heart rate is around 125, and his BP is around 130 over 95. Currently, he still looks unwell, pale, and distressed. He is cardiovascularly stable, apyrexial, with no other changes in his clinical state. His ECG shows T wave inversion in V5 to V6 and ST depression in V4 to V6. His blood test showed a uh, raised high sensitivity troponin at 520 and his gray score puts him in the high risk category. I have requested a chest x-ray and plan to repeat his troponin as well. My impression is that he has had a NSTEMI. I have started him on ACS protocol. Is there anything else you would like me to do, doctor? When would you able to uh, review this patient? I think he requires hospital admission for a monitored bed on CCU with a view to arrange a coronary angiogram, echocardiogram and secondary prevention to manage his risk factors. All right. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Last but not least, it will be nice to keep open and close questions in your SBA presentation. Be professional and have a short, well-comprised summary when you are presenting. Remember, it comes with lots of practice. Alright, hope this was helpful for your revision. If you like the video, please subscribe, do like it and uh, leave a comment if you want me to do a certain topic and if you want me to discuss about a certain topic in my next video. And yep, that's all. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.